Denise here, and I'm going to be leading you through Read Aloud for Wednesday. Um, and we're actually finishing up the Thief of Always series. It's been really fun reading this, um, but we do have an exciting ending coming up. So let's get started. Um, so our teaching point for the day, that uh, readers of fantasy think about the implications of the setting, concepts of power, internal and external problems characters face, and life lessons or themes readers and characters can learn. So let's recap where we were in our last read aloud. So Harvey has defeated Mar, Karna, Jive, Rictus. He finally meets Mr. Hood, who appears to be the house itself. Harvey appears to have defeated Mr. Hood by tricking him into wishing for all four seasons at the same time. Mr. Hood had given him one final wish before he would take Harvey's soul for himself. This wish created a big lightning storm that took down the holiday house. Mrs. Griffin died a painless death, which was fulfilling her desire she wanted to pass from the world. And children's souls who had been trapped in the holiday house were starting to become free. So some themes that have been emerging is good versus evil, doing what's right even when it's extremely difficult, and confronting your problems head on or facing your fears. Here's some graphic novel vocabulary that we're gonna refer to or we've been referring to in these read alouds. I'm not gonna go through each of them, but you can independently go to this page um, to help you understand this graphic novel more and then also help inspire you for your own graphic novel writing. And this is where we left off in our last read aloud. Um, so Harvey is talking to Wendell. He says, what happened to Hood, by the way? He's gone. They've all gone. Not quite. Now, why would I take myself off? We never said goodbye. So it seems that Rictus is still around. I know you're wondering why I'm not dead and gone. Well, I'll tell you. I did some planning ahead. I stole a little piece of the old man's magic, just in case he ever got tired of me and tried to put me out of his misery. I think by old man, he's talking about Mr. Hood. And I notice here that the illustrator is really zooming in on Rictus's hand and this magic, and it, it just shows how important it is. I've got enough power here to keep me going for years and years, long enough to build a new house and take over where Hood left off. Oh, don't look so unhappy, kid. I got a place for you right here. You can be my bird dog, bringing the kitties home to Uncle Rictus. So I've noticed there's like a little bit of a power shift. Um, and that's what good readers of fantasy do is pay attention to who has power. Um, so Rictus is trying to claim he has power by saying he has enough magic to keep the holiday house treachery going for years. Um, and then I notice over in this slide, in the slide on the right, um, the illustrator zooms in on the ground and on um, Rictus's feet, and we see Rictus saying, oh no, I beg. So something is shifting, because Rictus is now saying that he's begging, and we're looking really closely at the ground and his feet. Erk, mine. Hmm, now we see a red speech bubble. Last time we saw a red speech bubble, it was Mr. Hood. I wonder if this is Mr. Hood again. And in the second panel, we see um, this mysterious hand coming for the magic. Mine! Yes, the magic's yours. I was er, just holding on to it for you. Liar! I was, I swear. So it seems like there's been a power shift again because Rick just thought he was all in the power and now Mr. Hood is taking back some power. Give it to me then. Where shall I put it? And I'm noticing this hand is like just really in the center of things and maybe that's showing us that um, Mr. Hood is more, becoming more powerful and over on the left it's showing Harvey and Wendell are kind of losing some power. They're, they're just watching like what's going on. Right here, pour it into the ground. 
Whoosh. Hmm, I'm noticing a change of power once again. Um, so at this point, what it looks like the ground is getting really big and Rictus is getting really small. Um, so yeah, that shows a change in power. So thief, you see me as the man I was, or rather as a copy of that man. Is it what you expected? Yes, it's exactly what I expected. Your dirt and muck and bits and pieces, you're nothing. Nothing, am I? I'll show you, thief. I'll show you what I am. Let me kill him for you. You needn't bother. I'll do it. You? You brought him here. You're to blame. Um, so I'm noticing in this part, Harvey's continuing to show bravery. He doesn't let this whole situation um, deter him. Um, he still stands up to Mr. Hood. Um, and I think Rictus is in a pretty bad position, um, but he's almost like begging for Mr. Hood to let him go, and he wants to prove himself that he would kill Harvey. Shrimp! Now, thief, you will see power. And from this page to this page, um, we see the sound effect of Mr. Hood ripping Rictus's head, and then we see this close-up of uh, Rictus's head, and it really creates a scary mood, and I think Mr. Hood is trying to intimidate Harvey. Come closer, or I must come for you. Or must I come for you? Ha ha ha! Uh, we see Harvey trying to run away. Swoosh! Harvey, over here. Got you, little thief. Um, so Lulu seems like she really wants to help her friend Harvey. And she's being a good friend, just as we've seen Harvey throughout this series be a good friend. So I think that's something that the author might be trying to teach us, a little life lesson about the importance of being a good friend and being there for others. Lulu, we can't. We must. It's the only way. Hmm, they're looking at this hole like, is this an escape? Don't look. Do you give up? Surely you would not choose the vortex over me. Go. So I'm noticing in this slide, in this illustration, in the panel, I can tell from the the illustration that they're a bit frightened and I also get the image that they are like talking to each other really quietly um, their heads are close together this go kind of seemed more of like a whisper if you choose the flood you'll die horribly and it'll spin you apart whereas I I offer you an easy death rock to sleep on a bed of illusions Choose. Hmm, this is interesting. We see Lula coming up behind with a stick. Maybe I should sleep. Wise little thief, sleep. Hmm, do we really think Harvey's going to choose Mr. Hood's option, or do you think we tr he's trying to trick him again? wonder what you guys are thinking. What? You dare! Crack! Wow, what teamwork here in pulling on, pulling off Mr. Hood's coat. They really work together. And what a powerful panel that this one actually has no words and we're just seeing the image of Mr. Hood falling into this vortex. Um, so that's a really interesting choice that the author and illustrator made was to have this page with no words and we just have to take in this image of what's happening. Give me my coat, thief. It's all yours. No! Thief, help me and I'll give you 
the world forever and ever. So I definitely think there was a change of power here. Um, now Harvey and Lulu are in power and Mr. Hood is begging for his life. And here we have another panel of no words and we're just taking in this image of this vortex and Harvey and Lulu are very small on the edge of the vortex and they're victorious. They have defeated Mr. Hood. We did it. Did what? I noticed this little speech bubble is coming from someone not in the panel. So someone's about to arrive. What's been going on? And what was that? Who cares? Soon the freed children gather at the mist wall. Say something, Harvey, because you're a hero. Why? We're free because of you, Harvey. Everyone, I just want to say, let's make sure we don't grow up and forget about being here. Let's remind ourselves every morning, make a story out of it, to tell everyone we met. I think that's really interesting, and I think it's starting to lead to maybe a theme. Like, Harvey's actually telling them to remember about their hard times, or remember about their darkness. He's not even saying, oh, you should erase it from your memory, forget about it. He's telling them to remember it. So I wonder what the author might be trying to teach us about remembering our hard times. Why would that be important? They won't believe us. That doesn't matter. We'll know it's true, and that's what counts. Now let's go home. If time really is to set rights, I'm going back a few more years than you. And in the year that's waiting for me, you haven't even been born. I guess we do have one thing to thank Hood for. We were children together, at least for a little while. So I think this is like time for them to say goodbye because they're actually from different times. Let's go together as far as we can. So I think another thing we're really learning is how to be a good friend and appreciate your friends while you can. With his friends and Holiday House having faded, Harvey joyfully returned home to the embrace of his parents. He succeeded in stealing the years back from Mr. Hood after all. So I think a life lesson that Harvey's learning, um, especially because he was so bored in the beginning of the series and he didn't like his life, um, and now he's thrilled to be home with his parents. So I think he's learning to appreciate what he has or what we have and to appreciate the small things. But his parents had questions, questions with answers that were hard to believe. Only a trip to the site of Mr. Hood's evil could convince them. It was right here, I swear. It's all true. You should trust your boy. I have it on the best authority that he's a hero. You were one of Mr. Hood's prisoners? Not me, her. Lulu. Don't, please. She sent me in her place. She wants you to remember her as she was. Well, Harvey, it seems Mr. Hood ex existed after all. The days that followed were unlike any Harvey had ever known. Time would be precious from now on, and he resolved to fill every moment with the seasons he'd found in his heart. Hopes like birds on a spring branch, happiness like a warm summer sun, magic like rising mists of autumn, and best of all, love. Love for a thousand Christmases. The end. So the shortest one's question you're gonna answer today is what is the overall theme of the Thief of Always series? Um, so not just this section we read today, what's the theme of the whole thing? Um, so use at least two details from the text to support your response. Can't wait to see what you write. Happy Wednesday, fifth graders.